Hey folks, welcome to another Civilization 6 video. It is February 2021, so we have just had the recent free update with the new Barbarian Clans mode. So in this video, we are hoping to accomplish three things. First, of course, we are going to try and point out the new features in the Barbarian Clans mode as they come up. Second, I'm going to show a really awesome map seed for Kublai Khan. Unfortunately, I haven't really gotten it to work for anyone else besides Kublai Khan of Mongolia, but I will point out as we play through why this map seed is so awesome for this particular civilization and leader. And then lastly, I'm going to be showing how to raise a giant freaking army using the Barbarian Clans mode. So that will happen, hopefully, uh, if the game agrees with us. So we'll be playing on Deity, on Standard Speed, on a Pangaea map, small map side with the default uh, city-state uh, number and the number of AI also at default with the expansion rule sets on. So let's go ahead and get started. We're using Kublai Khan as the leader for Mongolia here, mainly for the starting location on this map. Now Kublai Khan's leader ability does give an extra economic policy slot, which is pretty awesome. And then also receiving a random Eureka and inspiration when establishing a trading post in another civilization's city for the first time. So both pretty useful abilities and then the standard Mongolian ability of getting uh, additional trade or uh, sorry, starting a trading post immediately once you start a trade route uh, in the destination city. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we have gotten our first barbarian clan reveal here, the Bear Tree Clan. So now, once you have revealed a Barbarian camp, if you have Barbarian Clans mode on, you can click on that little flag above the camp, and that gives you the ability to treat with the tribe, and the default options, if nothing else has, has happened, like getting a unit captured, are to bribe them to prevent your city from being attacked, now keep in mind, this only prevents your city from being attacked, not your units. And then hiring a warrior, initially it starts as a warrior, it can be different troops depending on the tribe. And I believe that's a little cheaper than buying a, buying the unit, probably because you don't get to control what city they come in. So like, if you compare that to the cost of actually buying a warrior, warrior costs 160 normally. So you can buy the same unit from the tribe or just 95, which is much cheaper, but you can only do so every 15 turns. Now these first two options will add points to the tribe becoming a city-state. Now, from what I can tell, it takes a lot, lot, lot of gold to have the city-state thing happen. I've never actually had it happen, even after selecting these options multiple times. Now you can also pay to have the barbarians attack a nearby civ or city state i find that option to not really be worth it at all all right so now let's highlight why this is such a great map start for kublai khan because based upon the starting location here you would sort of think well there's nothing great you only had a two food one production settle start and nothing notably spectacular around. So pay attention here, up here, we have seven gold per turn right here. And we are on turn 17, going into turn 18. Now you can see as we shifted there, we now have 32 gold per turn. So this doesn't really get talked about as much with all the oh my god, broken tourism bonus win in, you know, 60 to 100 turns on deity kind of thing. But the gold bonus early on in the game for a Monopoly is pretty substantial. It's 5 gold for the minimum Monopoly, 10 gold for 75% of the nodes, and 25 gold per turn for 100% control of Monopoly. So if you find a map where you can happen to control only the one single copy of a resource on a map, which sometimes that can be accomplished via Maui or a combination of... Uh, Maui and Anansi, but uh, it's very, very powerful in terms of gold bonus early on. Now, if you are playing on this map, the particular monopoly seems to be generated by the cotton here by having suzerainty status over Buenos Aires. It seems like they don't have to actually have it improved like the player does, but 
We know that it's not the honey that's generating that because we see more honey on the map and 25 gold bonus would mean that you have 100% monopoly. So it seems to be the cotton that is the, the key here to generating that 25 monopoly gold bonus. All right, so I mentioned earlier that we were going to be going over how to use the Barbarian Clans mechanic to create some pretty sizable army advantages. So here is what we're going to do now. How this works is you take the option here that will prevent them from attacking you. So how this wor works is basically it acts sort of like enforcing borders against barbarians. They will still attack you if you go outside of that area, and they will shoot into your area. But basically, it's because they want to attack you, but you have the agreement that they can't, they'll all huddle outside of your borders like this. And then what you'll need is you'll need one apostle that has the conversion ability. So I haven't, I just bought this apostle, so I haven't seen what ability he has yet. So we'll have to hang on here for a moment and see. Let me finish up this turn and then we'll check what um, what we have here. So let me go ahead and build this uh, Abdana here maybe, I think. Let's build it over, uh, let's see. Not sure, let's, we'll just we'll build it right here. And then let's bring our Hamiko over. We're gonna hang out here. Sorry, I hadn't wrapped up everything on this turn quite yet here. All right, so we'll be able to see what we have with our Apostle ability here in a moment. Hopefully he will have the right promotion. Very honest and we will illustrate how that works. We did not get it. So I uh, just need to save up a little bit for another Apostle and we'll cut back in here shortly once I have the correct Apostle. All right, hopefully they line up so I'm getting at least four units here. Ah, not quite. Now, the thing that you'll have to remember, though, is that they will actually attack my freshly generated guys here. So let's grab these three because we can use additional charges here. So, yoink. So, so all you need to do is you need to bribe them so that you have borders enforced against the barbarians. And then line it up so that you can snag as many as possible with them. And then you don't actually even need... So normally, in order to get a lot of barbarians off of the, the this apostle ability, the heathen conversion, you'd have to bring a unit out and guard him because he would just get killed by the barbarians otherwise. But in this case, because of the border mechanic added by the barbarian clans, you don't really have to worry about that. So you don't have to, to worry about accidentally killing the barbarians by bringing too strong of a unit out or losing a unit because your unit's too weak. So it makes it a lot easier to snag up a lot of guys with that ability and augment your army using Barbarian Clans. So that's one of the features in the in the new mode that I like. Now there's some other features in the new mode. Um, I obviously, I like being able to uh, recruit the cheaper units. I haven't been able to take advantage of the city-state mechanic. And then you can buy back captured workers as well. I'm not a huge fan of the captured worker buyback just because like if you are trying to work towards the city state for some reason that actually makes it so that they are um so that they lose progress towards that. So I'll go ahead and hire another swordsman from this camp here. So just um so 215 for a swordsman which is pretty cheap normally. Um I don't even have a swordsman unlocked so I actually can't repair that until I finish that. So so that is how that mechanic works, and we'll see if we can't stag up one more example here. Alright, so I can't get around to get all three of these, but uh, one other notable thing about the Barbarian Clans is they can spawn special units, but only, or unique units, but only from civilizations that are not in the game that you are playing. So here, the Berserker unit, I believe, is Norway's unique unit, so we'll go ahead and and take that, and now we have Norway's Berserker, least strength of 40, and I think they have some other abilities here. Yeah, so plus 10 while attacking, and uh, plus 2 movement of starting in enemy territory, so 40 attack is not too shabby, I think, compared to what we, I don't know what we have available right now, but 
Um, the plus 10 obviously is, is pretty, pretty sizable, but it's, I mean, they're on par with what, what we're I mean, the medieval unit knight here is, it's a little bit higher, but they don't have the, the movement bonus. So you can grab up unique units as well if you are converting. So that is, is how that works. The, um, and you can actually, you can actually purchase the the units as well with the hiring. Now the other thing is is that the, these clan types, so this affects what types of units they'll spawn. And so the tiger tiger clan there will spawn different units than the, the bear tree clan. And the different clans have um, different conditions on where they like to spawn their camp or where they have to spawn their camp. So some of them, there's there's ones that have the annoying ones that they're like ships and stuff. So those are my least favorite to deal with. But that's about all you need to know for that. Um, so right now, I'm not going to go through the many, many turns it takes to keep contributing to get this to convert to a city state. But if you want to convert to a city state, what you want to do is so that so that your camp doesn't get dispersed. You want to park like a low value unit on top of that camp while you continue to contribute to it and then it won't get dispersed by the AI and you can continue to uh, contribute towards their city state. And if you don't do that, then basically you're going to lose that camp to an, an AI just dispersing it. And the AI seems to have an advantage in that they don't, they seem to be able to just run in like Barbarian Clans isn't on and just immediately disperse the camp. Now, right now, the way it works is if you do go into a camp, you actually have to spend an extra turn dispersing it as opposed to how it worked uh, without Barbarian Clans mode on. So there we have it. Oh, and I did promise the map seed details, so let's get to those as well. Now, I mentioned before that I was not able to produce the same starting spot with any civilization besides Kublai Khan of Mongolia. So if you wanted to capitalize on that particular 25 gold luxury bonus I had, you'll either have to find another civ that works or you're stuck with playing Kublai Khan of Mongolia. Now, there's some of these map seed details that are sort of oddly specific to my map. So here's the game and map seed. And if I don't specify a specified setting, it's just on standard. But the, the oddity here is that on the natural wonders list, in order to get this exact setup, you'll have to remove the Sahara El Bay or whatever it's called, Ill Kill and Fountain of Youth. The, those just happen to be three that I removed when I did this map setup, and if you don't remove those exact ones, you might not get the same resource layout and such.